the next one here. Warriors uh, beat San Antonio last night, uh, and that clinches that series in five games. Kevin Durant led the way. He had 25 points. Dub Nation will face New Orleans in the West Semis. Game one is set for Saturday night at Oracle Arena. The Warriors are going on. The Spurs are going home. Uh, Bill Wolf, what is our hot take? The hot take is this, Greeny. The mighty Spurs are just another team now. And that goes to you, Mike. Well, that was written with the intention that Michelle Beadle would answer it, obviously. <laughs> Unfortunately, she's not feeling well. I hate to say this, and I mean, I, I would say it if she was here, and I'm sure she would argue back at me. I, I don't think that's news. I think they've been just another team for a while now. Uh, I know that they, I know they were blowing out Golden State in Game One last year of the West Final. I know with Kawhi Leonard, they are a very good team. The second, maybe the, the third best team in the West. Maybe they were the third best team in the West this year. Anyway, they were also closely bunched. But the Spurs were a team that you thought every single year had a real chance to win the championship through the Duncan era. And they aren't that, and they haven't been since he left. So I'm going to say they are just another team. I disagree. And here's what the Spurs aren't sexy. And look at the Philadelphia 76ers. Their bandwagon is going to get so full that they're going to have to kick people off. Yeah. You just said that they have been just another team recently. They just won a championship yes. a few years ago. Absolutely. They didn't want 55, 60 games every season. They still have Kawhi Leonard. If he doesn't play for them and doesn't sign an extension, they can parlay him into some other parts. As long as Pop is standing on the sideline, R.C. Buford is making decisions. The Spurs will not just be another team. How long is Pop standing on that sideline? He's 69 years old. He's been there 22 years. He's going to coach the Olympic team starting in two years. I don't think that this is going to be his final year. I think you see it through with the Kawhi Leonard situation. Absolutely. Mono is going to come back, in my opinion. You try to parlay Tony Parker into something. You got LaMarcus Aldridge playing at a high level. I think the no, Spurs are going to be I agree. I, I agree. As long as Greg Popovich is the coach, they're never going to be just another team. Obviously, with Kawhi Leonard and that saga, not only is he not on the court, but he's holding a spot where you can't do anything else with it. The Spurs won't be just another team because they will always have a shot. And through this dynasty, they've had some years where they want their number one seed and they want the team we talked about all season. But in in the end, we were looking at that team to challenge for the Western Conference Championship. Let me give you one more here. Much of the Warriors' victory last night can be attributed to the performance of Draymond Green, who was terrific on both ends of the floor. 17 points, 19 rebounds, 7 assists to help close out the series. After the game, he was asked about his contribution. There was a remark made on the broadcast today about, uh, came from C-Webb, he said if you're on other teams and asked to score, you probably wouldn't start. I don't think he meant it as a slight, but do you still feel like your your your, your point production is underrated in this league? Uh, ah, yeah, you trying to start a beef, bro? <laughs> Come on, man. I don't, I, you know, I, I don't have a score in my uh, scores mentality, um, especially for you know the team that I play on. Um, I think if I did have a scores mentality, it'll throw all this off and it wouldn't work out. I've been an All Star twice, averaging like eleven points, ten points, or something like that. Like. I think I've created a new lane for guys in this league to where you don't have to score 20 points to be an all-star or be a star in this league. And my jury fit well. So I'm Damn. I'm doing pretty good. So, Damn. you know, much love to see Webb, though, from Damn. Michigan. Uh, state of Michigan, you know. <laughs> we good. <laughs> I love everything about it. Bill Wolf, what's the hot take? It's a hot one, Greeny, and it comes from Chris Webber, really. Draymond's greatness is a product of the Warrior system, Jalen Rose, what say you? This isn't fair to Draymond Green. And by the way, there's nothing I could say in this conversation that isn't going to have people trying to find subliminals. <laughs> but I'm just going to say honestly what I feel. There are 30 teams in the league. There are five people that are starters. You can't tell me there are 150 players in the league better than Draymond Green. Mm -hmm. So that's just not fair to him right off the top, number one. Number two, here's the thing. We have to appreciate role players. Mm -hmm. Everybody can't be a superstar in the game. And for Draymond, people got to pay attention to the fact that he's allowing their death lineup to happen. At six foot seven, he can guard fours, he can guard fives, he can grab rebounds. He leads their team in assists. He leads their team in rebounds. Scoring isn't the only important thing that happens in basketball. And he's a lockdown defender. He's always in the conversation for defensive player of the year. So he's a deserved all-star regardless of where he plays. Well, you know what happens is it's not sexy, right? When, when a guy goes in the second round of the basketball, of the NBA draft, it means you don't have these – 
impressive physical traits. It's like when a guy falls in the draft because he doesn't have a good combine in the NFL. Draymond does all the smart basketball things. His IQ, he does all the grunt work. And when you have a team full of specialists and superstars, this is the type of glue that holds that together. It, Draymond Green is a player. Is Dennis Rodman a good comparable to him if you look at what Rodman's role was on great teams? And, a, and, and, a, absolutely, no doubt about it. In the conversation for defensive player of the year, leading the team in rebounds, he's a be- He's a better passer. With more skill. Absolutely. I, I, I'll give you an example. What he does for the Warriors is what Rajon Rondo does for the Pelicans. Rajon Rondo isn't out there for his offense, but he gets them the assists. He gets them the boards. He does all of the intangibles, and he plays defense. Bill, well done on the hot takes. If you actually heard the way Weber said it, I think the question was correct. I don't think he meant it as, a, as an insult. I, I think it was a compliment. In a strange way, he yeah. meant it as a compliment, but if you actually uh, – if you just read the words themselves, then it's going to sound – Awfully different. Now, on another uh, note, it was all love for Dwayne Wade last night. As the Heat get bounced out by the Sixers in the first round. Here's a fun fact. Dwayne Wade's first NBA game was also in Philly. So it was only right that he was asked last night if that might be his last NBA game. Here's what he said. That's not my focus. Um, You know, uh, fresh off this NBA season, my 15th year. I sit back and think about that. Then I, I dive and throw myself into my family. You know, you know they, they're next and, and on my bucket list of making sure I'm there for them. And then when it's doing it, when it comes to the basketball side of it, which is a long time away from now, um, uh, then I think about that. But right now, uh, I ain't concerned with it. Of course, y'all know I'm giving it thought. Um, this is Philly, and I love Philly, but ain't gonna be no breaking news here in Philly. <laughs> I'm sorry. So I appreciate y'all concerning, but we'll worry about that later. Um, you know, ain't gonna break nothing here. He's one of the great players of all time, obviously a first ballot Hall of Fame lock. Do you think we've seen his last game? No, we haven't. And the key number is 31. That's how many minutes he played last night. Also, the way he performed in Philly when they won earlier in this series, we took over the game and they actually got their only victory. When you're still able to play at that level and you realize that the grass isn't always greener, Mm -hmm. because he left Miami, remember. He had an offer from Denver. Wanted to have a homecoming in Chicago. That didn't work out. Wanted to reunite with LeBron James in Cleveland. That didn't work out. It worked out perfect for him that he got traded back to the Heat. Now as a reserve, not there to carry the load, I would be shocked if he doesn't play next year. And I think talking about the way he got back to Miami is important because it's different when they bring you in the office and you're already under contract, you're on a team, and they say, Dwayne, you're going to have to take a diminished role. But when you go other places and you see that it's not going to be beneficial to you to be there, now you can come back and accept the role in the place You've always loved. And like Jalen said, if you could play at that level, and most importantly, if they're going to continue to pay you money to play mm-hmm. at that level in those type of minutes, it's going to be hard to walk because, away. Because if you don't leave initially, it's hard to turn the team over to Goran Dragic. They paid Hassan Whiteside a ton of money. He was invisible in mm-hmm. this year's playoffs. This is what was the catalyst to Dwayne leaving. He wasn't going to take a diminished role with that squad. Right. Now that he's come full circle, he's willing to do it. The public accepts it. He accepts it. I think he comes back to play again. All right, we'll see. Obviously, everyone would like to see another season uh, from Dwayne Wade.